Uh, this is one of my simplest pieces of advice uh, that I use with my students all year long. Often when I give papers back, they'll have uh, a little acronym, RTQ or ATQ. RTQ simply means read the question. Uh, sometimes if you don't read very carefully, you go off in a different direction than what was intended. And my other favorite is ATQ, answer the question. Um, it's amazing how many times we look at a response on the uh, free response section and the student didn't actually answer the question that was asked. Uh, they may have answered a different question that was pretty interesting, but we can only give uh, credit to uh, answers that head toward the one that we were expecting. So, if a question asks you to do each of the following, make sure you, so for example, if a question asks you to describe a distribution of a quantitative variable, they're expecting a discussion of shape, center, and spread. That's, that's a prompt that students should know by the end of the course. If the question asks that uh, students compare distributions, then it needs to be comparative uh, about the center, which one has a higher or lower center, which, which distribution has more or less variability than the other. The question asks you to describe similarities and differences, uh, then that's what, uh, what's expected. All of these have appeared uh, on different exams, and in each case I've seen students uh, follow one of the other sets of directions uh, besides the one that was given. If a question asks you to explain or justify, then Obviously, that's something that you're going to need to do to get uh, full credit. And this is the trickiest one. If a question is a compound question that asks you to do more than one thing, uh, for example, find the mean and the standard deviation of a random variable or calculate and interpret a confidence interval, the student has to do both things uh, in order to get, uh, to get full credit. So it's really important that you read the question carefully and then be sure that you've answered the question that was asked. If it's a yes-no question, uh, then you need a yes or a no, and you need justification. Okay, Josh, number one. Number one, be prepared. Uh, so, one thing you could do to be prepared, review the formula sheet and the tables that come on the AP exam. Um, I find my students do use the tables. Uh, lots of times they don't use the formula sheet, uh, but it's good to know what's on the formula sheet so that uh, if there is an issue, uh, you can go look at it, and maybe looking at the formula sheet will help prompt you uh, and trigger something in your brain. So know what's on the formula sheet, know what the formulas refer to, and know how to use the tables that are provided. And just so you know, the formulas and the tables are provided on both sections uh, of the exam, the free response and the multiple choice. Okay. The next uh, tip is to do lots of practice uh, AP exam questions, uh, including, as you'll see, a full-length exam if possible. Um, it's nice for students to have the experience of sitting for a three-hour statistics test, uh, to have to stretch their brain for that length of time, and covering the entire course. Um, and if you have an opportunity to do that, uh, it'd be nice to focus on more recent exams. Um, you can find uh, in your AP audit account um, recent exams that have been given internationally. Uh, these exams, of course, are secure, uh, but um, you can use those with your students in class. Uh, you can also assign uh, released free response questions uh, from AP Central to your students. And as a general rule, I'd recommend that you focus on more recent exams. Um, there are, of course, good questions on older exams, but uh, the more recent exams uh, will be better indications of the kinds of questions that are being asked, and the scoring guidelines will be uh, more reflective of how questions are being scored uh, nowadays also. The third thing, uh, is to identify weak spots and focus on them. Uh, so there's a couple ways to do this. One, of course, is the full-length practice exam that covers the entire content. Um, you can uh, tell by the kinds of questions that your students are asking after that, or if you grade it yourself, you can see where the weak spots are and focus on them. Also, for teachers, uh, after the AP exam and after the scores are released in July, uh, maybe sometime in August or September, uh, you'll be able to get an instructional planning report uh, that talks about how your students did in each of the four major content areas, uh, des um, descriptive statistics, collecting data, probability, and inference. I know my students typically um, are weak in probability, uh, so we'll do lots of extra practice questions about probability uh, leading up to the AP exam. Uh, and then the last thing uh, for preparing students 
uh, is to give them a set of flashcards uh, that we have available in the teacher's resource materials uh, for both TPS 4E and 5E. Um, uh, for TPS 4E users, they're in the binder uh, at the very back. Uh, for 5E users, uh, there's no print binder anymore, uh, but if you have the teacher's resource flash drive, uh, if you look in the Chapter 12 folder uh, for the teacher's resource materials, uh, you'll see a PDF of the, of the flashcards there. There's a set of 80 flashcards that review all the key ideas uh, from the course. Um, every year, my students report back to me that they were very glad that they went over the flashcards uh, as they were getting ready for the AP exam because several of the concepts uh, that they had been reviewing showed up on the exam and they felt uh, much better prepared because of that. All right, so that's number one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and count down uh, the top 10 tips again. You can see them flashing up there on their screen. And the very last note is for questions. Uh, so, Nicole? Uh, you can go ahead and uh, read out some of the questions that have come in.